Hey guys, it's Sebastian from SkyComp Solutions, and today I'm going to show you how to get attendee reports from Microsoft Teams live event feature. Let's get into it. So we're going to open up Microsoft Teams here. We're going to go down to the calendar um, menu. We're going to go up to the top to the drop down menu where it says new meeting and we're going to create a live event. We're going to do test. We're going to put a title in because it needs a title. Um, we're going to put a little description in so that people know I'm just testing and that I shouldn't join this live event. We're going to go next. Um, what we want to do is we can do organization wide. You could do a public event as well. It doesn't really matter. In teams, you want to make sure to check off these boxes. So attendee engagement report, yes, you want to check that off. Q&A, you want to make sure that is checked off as well. If you don't check off those two options, you will not get an engagement report from the event after it's over. And those come in a form of an Excel spreadsheet. So they download automatically to your computer or you can go and I'll show you where to find them after the live event is done. So now that we've checked off those boxes, we know that's all set. We know we're going to get those engagement reports. We can go ahead and schedule our event. Here you can edit it. Right now, I'm just going to join it. Perfect. Awesome. So now I'm in the live event. We're going to switch our settings around here. Yeah, that's fine. We're going to choose our live mirror mini so that you can see me from there. Perfect. We're going to keep the mic muted so that we have no echo going on. And then there's something that actually I'll show you really quickly that Teams added it's a recent update so it's auditorium mode so we are still in a pandemic in Ontario at least um, so we can't gather in large groups yet but there will be a time when we can all get back together in larger groups hopefully that's sooner than later um, but you can optimize your sound to include in-room audience so if you have an audience with you in a, in a space and you're using Microsoft Teams maybe someone's on a Teams call you can make sure to check that off in auditorium mode. So it's gonna stop that echo. It's gonna account for audience applause and cheering, and it's gonna make that sound good on your Teams call. If you're using a professional live streaming service, they're gonna have the microphones and the ability to adjust audio levels and pick up that cheering and clapping as well. So if you're a live stream production company that's doing this as a separate event, you're gonna know probably not to check that off. You're gonna know how to mix your own audio and do that yourself. But if you're just putting a laptop in front of you and you have an audience of an auditorium in front of you, it's a good option to check off because it's gonna account for all that background noise that normally wouldn't be in a regular Teams meeting. So that's just an extra feature I thought I'd throw in there. Um, yeah, so we're all good. We can hit join now. I'm joining as a producer, of course. We have other videos. if you're interested in the description that explain how the producing of a live event works. I'm not going to go super in depth into that today. So we're going to add our video content here. We're going to send me live just so that I'm live. Look at that. Isn't that exciting? You have your Q and a option open. You have your meeting notes. You have your chat. Um, you can add presenters. Um, and see who's in the meeting currently. You can change those permissions of these people. And you can change your settings, of course, still as well. So in order to get an engagement report, we actually do have to start the live event. Perfect. So now we're live. We're gonna sit live for a bit. Um, we're gonna dismiss that. So. I have example engagement reports. If you don't have any attendees in your event, you won't see any attendee change or fluctuation in those kind of analytics in that report. You won't see anything. So you really do have to have attendees. Um, I'll show you a, re a report where I joined with one person so you can see what it looks like. When you get more and more attendees to a meetings, I think, I think you can have up to at least a thousand. It might be 10,000. We'll, we'll have to confirm that. Um, at the bottom of the screen here, what that number actually is. Um, but you'll actually see uh, when people are joining, when they're leaving, you'll see quite a bit of detail in those uh, reports. 
And as well, in the Q&A reports, you'll see questions that are asked. You'll see questions that the moderator pushed forward so that everyone could see. You can see the anonymous questions. Um, so that's a really helpful report as well. I know that working with a couple of people on live events in the past, they really want to see all those questions. They want to be able to answer those and maybe put that in a frequently asked question section on a website. So having those available to you is really, really helpful. So we've sat in this live event for a bit. Um, I can hit end here, end live event. And remember we checked off those boxes. So we're gonna be able to see those um, reports. So in order to find those reports, once the event is ended, once you've left that meeting, that event, um, you can go over to that little block on your calendar where we set it up, right click it, hit view, scroll down, and you have the live event resources that uh, show up for you. You can go to the Q&A report, you can download that. You can go to the attendee engagement report, you can download that. And you have the recording for attendees. So we had it have it set up in our um, administrative settings that it sends a recording to the attendees. You can disable that. And then it won't send the recording out to them. They won't have access to that recording which is, it's up to you. So we've downloaded both of those. We can go to our downloads folder here. And those are the recent ones here. We can open it up in Excel. And you can see it's just me. So I joined and I left. Um, gives you a session ID. Gives you actually the time as well um, when uh, I joined and when I left. Um, it shows you the role, which is really, really helpful. So you'll see in the role, the attendees, if there's any attendees. So that's what that report looks like. We don't need to save that. The Q&A report, we didn't have any Q&A. So you won't see anything there, but I'll show you in the other report where I did do some test chats of what that looks like. There it is. So I didn't do any very creative conversations. I literally just typed testing and question. So it actually fills the content in, in this uh, panel here. It gives you a conversation ID. It tells you when the conversation happened, when that chat was posted. And it says who, who did that. Um, so in the Teams live event feature, when you're asking a question in the Q&A um, panel, you have the option as the attendee to type in a name. Now, who's to say who will type in what, what name? Either they might not put their real name. You can encourage people to put in their real name, but they can type in anything that they want. Um, it doesn't have to be their name. They can also check a box at the bottom to make sure that they're anonymous. So you won't see ever who answered or who asked a question. So you can see what that looks like there. You can see that there's a moderator. So when whoever the host is or a presenter, they can see the Q&A feature. They can type in announcements in that Q&A box that the attendees will see. So you'll see that the content I sent out was testing, very creative again. And you can see that it shows the identity of that person. So really helpful analytics to know. And again, if you're looking to put those questions into a frequently asked questions section on a website, you can easily copy and paste them over. Um, it's super easy to find. And then the attendee report. So this had actually one attendee that joined, so you can see what it looks like. Yep, so it tells you they're an attendee, they joined, they joined, and then they left um, then. So, and you can see who that person was. So it gives you an email and it gives you their full name um, from their Teams account. If they're joining from a separate um, browser, if they're not joining from a Teams account, they're gonna again have to add their own information, add their email, and then that will appear there. So yeah, that's a basic kind of overview of the attendee report. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you could learn something from the live events feature from the Q&A and attendee reports. They're really, really helpful to have. I know some features um, in other live event platforms or webinar kind of style platforms 
um, don't have this feature easily accessible like Teams does. They really made it really accessible where you could just go in, hit download, and you have your reports. And it automatically generates them once you check off and make sure that you want to generate them. So there's a couple little things in there that you have to do to make sure you're going to get those reports. But once you've done it, you've got them and it's easy. So thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos on Microsoft Teams, you can head on over here. And if you'd like to subscribe to Skycom's YouTube channel and see and get, get updates on what we're doing, you can head over here and click the bell wherever that is on your screen. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.